Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to part 22 in the Boom Comics series of Clive Barker's Hellraiser. If you've missed part 1, you can find it linked down below. I sincerely recommend you check it out and follow along this epic saga releasing here on the channel three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, until we are finished. So that being said, let's dive right into it. Call me Tiffany. The nurses at the Chenard Institute did. They had to call me something, and I didn't talk much. Not after what Dr. Chenard did to my mom. Chenard wasn't a garden variety psychopath. He was obsessed with hell and with opening hell's doors. He used me to get his wish. That was the first time I went to hell. I've been back several times since. I would have died that first time. But you saved me, Kirsty. That's where my life really started. And this is where it ends. For my friends and for me. We see Tiffany on the floor and the Lament Configuration Guardian approaching. The skinless, fleshless, serpent beast from hell. Ready to attack. And she sighs. Still. I can't help thinking. It makes this afternoon not seem so bad. We cut to a flashback of Tiffany and a group of friends. They've slaughtered someone, or Tiffany has. Jesus, Tiffany. You, you fucking executed him. You shot him in cold blood? Have you looked around? I just gave him what he wished for. A trip to hell. Tiffany, we're here for the gates to hell. That doesn't mean, Theo, look around. This guy's a full-on collector. If we took his hell gate from him and let him live, he'd just find another gate. Oh, yeah, yeah, you sure? So that's why you killed him, yeah? Not, not for some other reason? Like because he reminded you of somebody else? We see Chenard, what would become the Doctor Cenobite, and his lament configurations, his hell gates encased. We cut back to Tiffany. Let's get out of here before the cops show up. We, we got what we came for. We used to smash the puzzles that open hell's gates, thinking it had closed them. It turned out we were... Well, we're doing the opposite. So, now, we get the gates out of circulation. It's not a permanent solution, of course, but we didn't know what else to do. We didn't know what else to do. Story of my life these days. We see a safe in a wall. Numerous puzzles confined there, with Lamartian's configuration etched in them. Isn't anyone going to talk about what just happened? What's the talk about? Norton, you... You got anything to say about this? I have no problem with targeted killings. Yep, alright, spoken like a spook. But I do have a problem with sloppy killings. We don't have official permission to sanction people, remember? I'd rather not end up in jail. Edward Norton, former spy. He was a player in the almost apocalypse last year, in some government capacity. When the world didn't end, he resigned and came and found us. And how about you, Jeeves? Please, tell me you see the problem here. Andrew's concern goes doubly for me. Rajeeves, from India, but he's Oxford educated, hence Theo's pet name for him. He won't talk about his backstory with the Cenobites, but we can guess from the way he plays with his wedding band every time they get brought up. His wedding band, which he wears on his right hand, like a widower. How the fuck am I this group's moral compass? I'm a fucking criminal for God's sake. Theo was a purse thief here in New York. One day he stole a bag with a door to hell inside. What a motley crew. We have nothing in common. 
except hell. And Harry Damore, a private investigator with a knack for the occult and for networking. He got us all together. Rajiv and I never even met the man. Theo likes to call us Harry's angels. Harry Damore, missing, presume damned. We've been working out of his office since, well, for the last year, since he disappeared alongside Hell's former high priest, Elliot Spencer. And you, Kirsty. The phone rings. Let it get a voicemail. You're busy. I need to take it. It's Norma. She's probably had another vision. Hey, Norma, what have you got? A migraine. From all these damn ghosts yammering at me. Speaking of things I inherited from Harry, there's Norma Payne. Her psychic gifts didn't come with an off switch, so she drowns out the voices of the nagging dead with an OD of TV. You sure it's not from 20 TVs playing toddlers in tiaras? Nah, definitely the ghosts. They're extra whiny today. Listen, Tiffany, somebody's about to use a puzzle box uptown in the Bronx. You're gonna have to hurry. It may be too late already to keep him from opening it. But you be careful for me. We cut to Tiffany approaching the bum holding the puzzle box. And as he turns, shedding his skin, his disguise, into the lament configuration, Guardian. I've got a bad feeling about this one. And Norma was right. She was right to be concerned. The beast approaches the four standing against hell. What. The. Fuck. Norton, watch out! As the Guardian slashes its wing. Everybody, run! We weren't prepared for this. Cenobites can't be killed unless they're inside the glyph of the Salutant, the magic circle which we didn't draw. And that's for killing Cenobites, who knows if it'd work. The Guardian smacks Rajiv out the way. His guts fall out. Oh no. Sorry, Rajiv. I hope now you'll find some peace. The group runs. But Tiffany's smart. She holds the box. Hey, you looking for this? She runs. She's got his attention. Shit, shit. Wrong turn, no doors, no windows, just... Oh, closet, this... This is it. No way out. But like a light switch, Tiffany has an idea, an epiphany. Except one. She begins to play with a lament configuration. Like riding a bicycle. I never thought I'd open one of these again. I'm trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. But if I'm going to be cliche about it, better the devil you know. She opens the box. The wall opens. She walks inside. Upon crossing the threshold, she closes the box. Gotcha. As the lament configuration guardian is looking through the door. But the dimensional gate, the portal, between hell and earth closes and an almighty screech ensues as the portal snaps its neck. Skull now in hell. That's for Rajiv. Never even got to find out what his story was. <coughs> Tiffany is interrupted by clapping. And who walks down the stairs? But the new high priest of hell. It's Harry Damore. I knew you were a badass, but I wouldn't have laid money on you beating an Eremite. Who the? Oh, Harry. No, not Harry. Not anymore. Harry? Damore? Tiffany asks, questioningly. Yeah. It's me. Surprised you recognised me under my new piercings. 
I've just got to stop meeting my Facebook friends like this. Hi, Tiffany. But if you're the pinhead now, what happened to Kirsty and Elliot Spencer? Great question. Like I said, good work on the Eremite. But what was your plan for getting back home? Ruby slippers? I've been to hell three times already. I never had trouble getting back before. Quite a risk you take. Were you expecting Kirsty to protect you this time? You keep calling that thing an Eremite. What's its deal? It's not like any Cenobite I've seen before. Cenobites are communal. Eremites are solitary. They serve Leviathan's will on Earth, solo. They're custodians of Hell's devices. They pass Le Martian's toys on to new owners and keep the puzzles safe from harm. What are you talking about? I've never seen these guys before and we smashed dozens of devices. That's because Spencer wanted the puzzles destroyed. So before he left his old post in Hell, he told the Eremites to stand down and let you have your fun. But Spencer's word is no longer gospel here. There's a new sheriff in town. And quite frankly, I could use some, well, deputies. Are you, are you asking me to become a Cenobite? No, of course not, nothing like that. I need help on Earth. I need someone with access to my files and my old contacts. I know I can trust you. And if I don't agree, what, I'm stuck here? No, of course not. Either way, I'm sending you back to Earth, just like I did last time you ended up here. So it seems Harry Damore has been a guardian angel for Tiffany in Kirsty's place. Oh, that... That answers that. During Elliot Spencer's crazy power grab, Theo, Rajiv and I ended up on the, the wrong end of an airstrike. There was nowhere to go but, but down. Did we lose them? Yeah. I don't think the damned really want to come in this maze. And who here thinks that's a good sign? We need to get... Home? A door opens up behind them. It was a portal out of hell straight into Damore's office. I thought it was your doing. Kirsty. Sending you guys home was my first act as hell's new pope. I mean, I wasn't going to let you suffer, was I? Besides, I knew you'd keep fighting the good fight. That's why I got Norton to hook up with you too. My point is... I'm on your side. I always have been. I've always tried to help you and Kirsty, Theo, everybody. Now, I could really use some help in return. This puzzle, kind of a red phone, it summons me. It'll be hard to get messages to you, and I'll need you to check in often. I'll help you fight hell on earth. If you help me fight for Earth in Hell. So, what do you say? Go find yourself another Faust de Moor and deal with demons. But if I don't, how would I find you, curse thee? Damn you, de Moor. Damn you for giving in to Hell. Tiffany is caught in a moral dilemma. Curse thee, de Moor, Hell or Earth. Who's telling the truth? Who does she fight for? She holds out her hand. She takes the box from Damore. And damn me for giving in to you. (sighs) So that happened. Wish I knew if it was the right thing to do if it was... Why do I feel like Eve with the apple? She holds the box in front of her. Oh, curse thee. Where are you? We flash to Kirsty in bed. She wakes up 
stretches, yawns. Click. Who's there? Elliot. Who else would it be? Happy anniversary, sweetheart. I love you. <laughs>